Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today I will be speaking about the complete anatomy of the maxilla. But before we continue, make sure to smash the subscribe button down below for more and more videos. So now we will go in order, starting with the frontal process, in which it forms part of the lateral aspect of the bridge of the nose. And the way to remember it is the word frontal ends in L, so lateral aspect, and the word frontal has an N, so lateral aspect of the nose. This is the easiest way to remember the frontal process. Orbital surface, as the name suggests, you can know what does it mean. So it is part of the face that houses the eye. Orbital equal to orbit, which is equal to eyes. Next is the temporal process, which will form the temporal bone. After is the zygomatico facial foramen. What do I mean by foramen? Foramen is an opening through which the zygomatico-facial nerve and vessel will exit from. So the same name has the same nerve. Next is the zygomatic process that will help form the zygomatic arches. Next is the infraorbital foramen. So as the name suggests, uh, infraorbital foramen through which the infraorbital nerve exits from. Next is the alveolar process that will, uh, they are sockets that will hold the teeth in a place. And as you know from my previous video about the mandible, the alveolar process in the maxilla, it is located inferior because the teeth are positioned down, whereas in the mandible, the alveolar process is located superior because the teeth are positioned up. Next is anterior nasal spine that will determine the differences in the mid-face morphology. So this is your mid face. It is immediately in the mid line of your face. It is found and this point is very important for prostodontists in order to determine the midpoint of your face. Here is a picture showing you a clearer position for the anterior nasal spine. As you can see, it is directly found in the midline of your face. Next is the vomer. It forms the nasal septum. And the way to remember it, the word septum ends in M, and the word vomer has an M in the middle. Okay, so remember if there is M in the middle, which means that we're speaking about the nose. Nose is found in the middle, right? And the one that is found in the middle middle is the nasal septum. So this is the easiest way to remember the vomer. Next is the nasal concha. We have two. We have the middle and we have the inferior nasal concha. Both of these, they have the same functions, which is forcing the inhaled air to flow in a steady, regular pattern in order to reach your lungs safe and sound. Next is the lesser wing and the greater wing of the sphenoidal bone, which will help form the base and the lateral sides of the skull. And the reason they are called lesser wing and greater wing, because as you can see in the picture down, the green part is the lesser wing because it is small, whereas the red part is a greater wing because it is great, it is big. Next is the nasion, which is the most anterior point of the frontonasal suture. What do I mean by frontonasal? So it is located between the frontal bone and the nasal bone. So the part that separates the frontal bone from the nasal bone is referred to as the nasion. Here is another picture to clarify more. Up the blue part is the 
frontal bone. Down, the orange part is the nasal bone. Between them, we have the separation between them is referred to as the nasion. Now, located above the orbit, your eye socket, and under the forehead is the supraorbital notch, which is also referred to as the supraorbital foramen, through which the supraorbital nerve and blood vessels will exit from.